So, now welcome to uh, Antoine or Flaburgan. So, Flaburgan is a Mozilla reps from France. He is especially interested by online privacy and projects like Collusion. He is making presentations to inform people and explain them how they can set Firefox and other Mozilla tools to protect their online life. Um, Antoine is also a mouflet, so he is belonging to the new generation of the French community and this is the nickname I've given them, with love. So mouflet is a small fry in English um, and so they even are now planning some mouflet meetups in the French community. So please welcome my uh, belong, beloved mouflet, Antoine. Can you hear me, yeah? Oh, okay, that's nice. Um, for those who want, the presentation is already online on GitHub, so you can follow the slide on your computer. Um, this year. Oh, sorry. Um, okay, here we go. Um, this presentation will be um, with a lot of speed because I usually talk about that during house. Um, and I got only 25 minutes, so here we go. Um, so uh, I'm also Barre. I think I don't need to talk more about that. I contribute to Jasper and Mozilla project because I care about privacy on the internet. Um, the first thing that I wanted to tell to you today is that the internet is powerful, the web is powerful. Um, we are doing things today with a web that nobody imagined uh, when the web was build at the first time, so we are building a, an operating system for mobile phone. We are doing uh, a lot of stuff. I, I recently saw a fridge with Twitter on it. Um, so the, the web is not only about a browser on a computer, it's on many devices, it's everywhere. And unfortunately, um, only a few person are able to understand how the web is working. And one of the bad side, the downside of uh, this is that uh, many people just don't care about their data and what the web can be wrong with him, with them. So, um, yeah, just a number. 300 millions of pictures of images uploaded on Facebook every day. So, most of them are um, very personal or maybe professional data, but um, that's um, an amazing amount of, uh, of data uh, which are transferring using the web every day. Um, <coughs> and unfortunately, the people who deal with th those data um, are doing that to have more money. Um, the, the, the goal of a corporation is to, to yeah, have money every day to, um, I mean, I think you, you know that if you're in, in the first day today, that the difference between non-profit and corporation. Um, so my point today is, uh, in the web, it's pretty different because you say, okay, I'm dealing with company almost every day, like I'm going to my bank, uh, I'm going to the bakery, um, but those companies are just right next to you. Um, if you have a problem with uh, Google, with Facebook, with a big company on the web, you will not be able to easily contact them. You will see, um, just after I will give an example of a, a story which is really sad about someone who tried to contact Google. Um, so they are far away from you. You cannot do anything. You cannot go there and talk with them. Um, and they, most of them are really big. Like, if today you say, okay, what Facebook is doing with my data is wrong, I don't want to use Facebook anymore, I will use something else, it will be really, really hard for you to use, to find an equivalent in the services. There is no equivalent to Facebook, there is no equivalent to Google. It's something too big to, to, be, to compete with. So, <coughs> this kind of company owning all data is a problem. And the states owning all data is a problem too. I think um, you, you probably know this slide. Um, they come from uh, the Prisma story in the NSA that Snowden uh, revealed to everyone in last June. Um, 
one of the reason I'm doing this pitch once again because I already did it last Thursday, but I think it's important because this change. So um, I don't know if you can read easily, but that's all the all the cooperation. The NSA have um, an, an agreement with them to directly um, take data inside this um, uh, this uh, database. So if you're using a software or services of one of those companies, so you got Microsoft, Yahoo, Google, Facebook, um, uh, YouTube, Skype, Apple, everybody. So you'll, pro you'll probably have your data somewhere. I mean, I try to have none of account on all these companies, and it's really hard to do. Um, so here is the situation, know the point, OK? The next say, know that I'm sharing kittens picture on the internet, who cares? Uh, well, there is many problems about that. Um, the first one is uh, the, the dependency you have to these services. Um, for example, the story I was talking about was um, a, um, an artist who was working using almost every Google services, so he got um, Gmail to talk with all the, the contacts he has. He, has, um, he used Picasa to share um, his work. He used an Android phone, and one day, like every morning, he just switched on his computer, and so, okay, you're not allowed to access Gmail anymore because um, your account was closed. You, you, you do not respect anymore the, um, the terms of use. So it was like, okay, no explanation, no thing. So say, okay, so I cannot write you an email because you just closed my email. <laughs> um, I will try to call you. So he, he picked his phone, and the drawing was mocking, OK, you cannot use this phone anymore because you do not respect the term of use. So no phone, no email. Um, and he, he tried to do a lot of research um, during one week to know what, why his account was closed. Um, and it, it spent one week before succeeded to talk to a human, someone from Google able to say, oh, it's because one of our bots detect that on one of your pictures, one of the work you're doing, there is a naked chill, so it was considering as pedophilia, but you know, this kind of um, uh, art of you can find in many church, well, nothing, nothing problematic. So Google just say, okay, excuse us, uh, we, are, we are sorry about that. Your account is here again, every, every data are here. But during one week, no phone, no email, no work, nothing. Um, I think you can imagine that it's really problematic to be as dependent as a service like that. Um, the other point is targeted advertisement. Um, you can say the same. I don't care if um, someone knows that I'm looking for a camera on the internet. The point is um, today with the different um, tools the advertiser used, they are able to know which side you, you are visiting. So they can say to you, OK, you were to Amazon. You didn't find the camera, so you go to eBay. And this kind of information is really, 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 really important for every person who, who do some sales online. If you're able to say, imagine in real life, in the street, you go on a shop, and you don't find the shoes you were looking for. You go back, and you go to another shop. And if the seller in that shop can know that you didn't find something in a concurrent of him, um, he can sell you exactly what you want. He can order it. He can, he can yeah, maximize every, every sales he will do. So online, this is possible. And uh, this is dangerous for us because we will just yeah, sell all that. And we will just buy tons of stuff. We don't really need. So this is also a problem when you start thinking about profiling. Um, for example, if you say, OK, um, I, I just like some kittens on uh, Facebook. I don't see the problem about that. But you don't know why. Maybe someone somewhere will see that statistically, um, people loving kittens are more probable there is more probability to have a car accident if you love kittens. OK. Nothing, nothing can say that in real life, but maybe statistically you will see that. OK, so what is the consequences of that? The insurance will directly say, oh, 
you probably have a, you will have probably a car accident, so you will pay your insurance more just because of that. Profiling is really really dangerous too, because it impacts directly your money, it impacts directly yourself outside of the web in the real world, and of course that could be bad for your job too, and for the state. Uh, I think that we saw what happened in Syria, what is happening in a lot of countries in the world around there. Um, we don't want our formation to be as easy as access like it is right now. It's too easy for people to access our information. And especially you can say, okay, I'm in Europe, maybe in Germany or in France, so the government there are not bad. They, they are here for us. <laughs> At the beginning, the idea was that. Um, but nobody can say what, what will be legal or illegal in 10 years. If today loving kittens is a good idea, maybe in 10 years it will be completely forbidden, and then you can go in jail because your data for, from 10 years ago was already accessible. So um, we, we have to do something about that. Um, the first thing we have to do is to choose the services and the softwares we are using. So the question to ask ourselves about that is, first of all, what, what, want, what do you want? Ah, what do I want to, to hide? Um, if I try to, I don't know, if I'm in China and I want to post something very controversial on the internet, um, I will need something really, really secure. Um, it's not the same. I've, is as if I just don't want Google to know that I'm looking for shoes. So um, who is providing the service? If it's someone who is doing that to have more money or if it's someone non-profit like Mozilla can be. Um, and especially how much time and, and money and how much knowledge I have, how much can I invest myself in this project? If um, I know nothing, I don't want to spend any money because I don't care about my data and I don't have time to. Uh, well, I will use the first uh, email provider I will find, like Gmail, Hotmail, stuff like that, and that's all. And the last point is where is it located? What, what's the, um, the law in the country where my data are? Is it in the USA? Is it in Europe? Where is it? So when you put that, this question, you see that you can um, go from top to bottom. Uh, with the top will be something which will already spend. You will have to spend a lot of time on it, a lot of money, and you will need knowledge to to be able to do that. And at the bottom, it's just okay. I don't care. I choose one company, and that's all. Um, <coughs> the first thing which is important now is to use free software because if you if you need to encrypt completely your data, like you say, okay, I will use Tor to protect myself. But if you do that on, a, on, a, on Windows, for example, you're just wrong. Because um, the, the, the information you're entering on your keyboard are already recorded before going to Tor, so it just uses. Okay, so now I will talk about Lightbeam. Uh, Lightbeam is the new add-on. Uh, it's the new version of Collusion, so it's a project from one year ago, one, two years. Um, and it allows us to, to monitor um, online web tracking. So I will show a short video to you because I don't have Wi-Fi really easy, so I did that this afternoon, seeing that this morning was out. So um, here is Lightbeam. So as you can see, we just discovered that Ubuntu.com was already found on the first page on Ubuntu. This is an empty profile in Firefox. So on the right, you can see the localization of the server. So it's in United Kingdom. And now I'm going to just um, go to different websites to see what happens. So here we go, Electronic Frontier Foundation. OK, there is only one node. So here will be a graph. And each node of this graph will be the website I visited directly or indirectly. So at the moment, it's only directly. I went to Ubuntu.com. I went to the Electronic Frontier Foundation. Um, now I will go to the New York Times website. And there, you will see that it's very different. Um, so the website is loaded. And here you go. 
you have the New York Times website, so when, it's, uh, shape, the, when the shape is a circle, I directly visit it. Um, and all the website uh, uh, around uh, the New York Times are aware that I went to the New York Times website, but I didn't want to uh, say that to them. So let's take the example um, I said just before, going to eBay and um, looking for a camera. So the eBay website, um, I have also third party sites inside it. Um, so just looking at, as you can see, the um, you probably can see it well, but the in in interesting point is that um, some of the third party website are connected to the two websites I visited. So um, at the middle is double, doubleclick.net. It's a famous um, advertisement company. And they are able to say, okay, this person went from New York Tap website to eBay. Why did they do that? This kind of information is interesting. Um, here is another website, it's Price Minister. So as you can see, there is tons of um, content included from other sites. Um, and so now, uh, yeah, I'm looking to the camera too. Uh, yeah, the point is like a double click, for example, is able to say all, all my navigation on the web are directly uh, tracked by this website. So unfortunately, I will not have time to really explain that. How much time do you have? Okay, you can see that there is tons of, of uh, third party website. So um, you can see that Lightbeam now allow you to filter, um, yeah. Lightbeam allows us to filter um, different, um, to, to display only the website I already visited or only the third party website. Um, it allows allow us to show or not connection between this website. And it even allows us to block website and to watch some website especially to keep the focus on them. Um, so double click you can see is in the USA. Uh, another view, interesting view is the, the list of all the websites you visited. You can, from this list, block a domain. You can also see the clock view. This view is um, loud, so this was an empty profile, so it's only today, but when you keep browsing during, for example, one week, it's really time consuming, so you have a, a big, big graph. If you want to only see what's interesting inside, you need to use the clock view. And the last thing I want to show you is the contrib contribute um, data. This allows Mozilla to try to make a graph or advertiser spying on you. So if you want to contribute, that could be nice. Okay. Um, so I don't really have time to explain you how is that working technically, but we can talk about that outside. Um, the thing you have to know is like it's not only about cookies and everything like that today. Um, the, the new fashion, if I can say it like that, is just to try to, um, unif um, to see if your browser is unique. Um, for example, the Electronic Frontier Foundation um, create a new, a new project which will look only to your, to your browser um, to see if he's unique looking at the user agent, looking at the plugin available, looking at the times on your the fonts, almost everything, and just by looking at that, they are able to almost identify you, the main unit, yeah. You will be f pretty almost, each time you, you, they will be able to say, okay, it's you, even, even if uh, they do not use cookies or stuff like that. So, um, other user, what can I do? So, in Firefox, blog third-party cookies, um, and do not track, and you have some automatic solution add-ons like Ghostery, which is not free software, unfortunately. Disconnect Me is almost the same, and it's free software. It's not as good as Ghostery at the moment, but if you contribute, it will begin, become better. Um, no script and request policy, for example, to block everything from our website, but you have to be more technical to do that, and you have to, to, 
yeah, you have nothing without goad wheel anyway, so be careful. So if I show you the difference now, um, I, I, I will, yeah. So here is the preference to, to set inside Firefox. Um, so the do not track is just a flag to say, I don't want to be tracked. The website, nothing obliges the website to um, listen to you, but at least you said it. Legally, it's important. Um, clear the history. And as you can see, um, I now have uh, Ghostory in the, in the extension. So let's see the difference in Lightbeam. All the tab I had uh, was uh, the web page I visited just before without anything activated. So I just refreshed it. So New York <coughs> time, eBay.com. Um, and you will see at the right, there is a um, purple bubble which is um, all the external content that Ghostory blocked to protect you. Uh, if you click on Ghostory, you can find inside it um, the exact element which was blocked. And you have uh, some links to have more information about why and from where. And, so, and now, if we go to the graph, here we are. So I think the result is way better. I think we can. To say that this graph is really, really, really nicer than the previous one. And especially, there is no common node between the site I, I visited. So, no navigation history. Okay, um, and just to finish, uh, what you can do as a power user, because I know we are in the first dam, usually I do not do put that here, but um, you, you're able to, to change your services. So there is a full list on prisbreak.org um, of services you can replace. Um, you can, for example, host your own services instead of using um, Google for your agenda, your to-do list, or stuff like that. Unclude and Cozy Cloud are new project about that, and they are really great. Um, you should try them. And you should try to use um, OSs, which are not which are free software, yeah. I think you already know that. And spread the word. And especially the last slide, what you can do as a web developer, try to avoid inclusion of external content if you can. Um, it's not that hard. Uh, if you want to embed a social button like the like button for, from Facebook, for example, you can put an image with just the button. Image, you will host the image yourself, not on Facebook.com. And if someone click on the image, you will just put a little bit of JavaScript to replace it with the real iframe provided by, um, by Facebook. But at least if someone doesn't click on the button, it will not be tracked by Facebook.com. So yeah, think about it when you include the same for YouTube videos. It's easy to put just the first image of the video and then to um, when the user click on it to replace it by the iframe with the autoplay on it. It's easy to do and it's safe a lot of privacy for your visitor. You can use Pewik instead of Google Analytics. Google Analytics is everywhere. It's more than 90% of, of the website of the world which are Google Analytics included in it. So Google is aware of almost everything which is happening on the internet and that's bad. Um, and you can use Persona too. You had a presentation of it um, just today which allow you to connect using, using uh, your Google account, but without, without saying it to Google as directly as if you increased it in a website or Facebook Connect too. And you can avoid um, pro hosters like uh, Amazon or Windows Azure, because of course all the visitor IP will be tracked by these. Okay, it was really quick. <laughs> um, do you have any question? Ludo, do you allow us? Do you allow us? Okay, thank you. So I give two questions. So first, and then. Is Lightbeam compatible with CMonkey? And if not, why not? Is Lightbeam com compatible with CMonkey? That's the question. 
Uh, well, honestly, I didn't try. I don't know. I just make the promotion of Libim, but I didn't write the code of the add-on, so I don't know. In but order for, for, for it to be compatible, it needs uh, the proper um, paragraph in the um, uh, installer DF okay. uh, file. Well, the code is on GitHub, so if you have any suggestion, you can just open an issue or file a bug about that. <laughs> Easy answer. Uh, not quite a question. There's actually a jQuery plugin by a German IT publication which enables two click. So first activate, then register for Facebook, Google Plus, Twitter okay. and stuff. It's cool. called uh, Social Share Privacy. Oh, nice. Fully localized in English and I think they have five Thank or six languages now. Thank you for noticing me. That's cool. But don't, don't include jQuery from Google. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. <Right. laughs> uh, I had another question. Okay. Another one? No. Yeah. Isn't it, in your interest, sorry. Isn't it somewhere in your interest to um, fund Google, because Google funds uh, funds Firefox? So isn't it in your interest I to allow time. all these websites to track you? Well, no, because we care about our user first. Surely, the user first. Yeah. If, if you want to continue to speak about that, yeah. I can go outside and we will. Well, Thank you so much. Maybe after, send the bell because I want <laughs> to listen to you. <laughs>